All right, everyone, we've got some video games here, just a few. Uh, these are my recent pickups from, well, they're not so recent because <laughs> I think the last time we did a collection update video was like two months ago because last month was the, the random PS2 lot I found on eBay. So this is like two or nearly three months of purchases. I've been waiting to open these, so let's check them out. So, like we uh, did before, we'll try and look at the new stuff first, which Amazon is always new stuff. Also, I've had some pickups that were like in-store, which some of these are still sealed just because I haven't played them yet. And I don't know why, but I just leave them sealed until I uh, play them. But these will get opened eventually. We've got... Uh, I just got these, actually. Mario Kart 8... Uh, FF7 Remake Integrate and Subnautica Below Zero. Love the first Subnautica. Um, I just went through the original Final Fantasy VII on PS4, the remastered port, so to speak, but it's principally still the PS1 game. I forgot how wild the game gets past Midgar. Um, so I'm excited to jump in to integrate at some point. And then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I know everybody and their grandmother has this, but I was actually piggybacking off of uh, my friend Terrell's copy, so I finally decided to go buy my own at that point because it's not going to really get much cheaper but i picked up those and then oh hold on digital hauls as well which i know sounds a little bit strange we don't do that too often here but i did want to pick up some of the uh very last vita games that have ever been released on the playstation store all these actually i think this was like 40 30 40 something dollars uh, wanted to support the last developers on PlayStation Vita. Had to do it. Haven't started those yet, but I will probably do that this coming uh, weekend. Now, the <laughs> Amazon's definitely a new game. And I think that's the only, one of the only new ones in here, if I'm not mistaken. But for Amazon, and I, I really, I, I have forgotten a lot of these at this point. L.A. Noir. Okay, so this was cheap, actually. Very cheap. I wanted to get this because I've still never actually played it, and you may have noticed in the background sometimes I have L.A. Noir on Nintendo Switch, which is not really, like, an ideal place to play it. Um, and I haven't played it on the Switch, by the way. But sometimes how I got that copy was sometimes me and Terrell will, like, if games are on sale and they're, like, super cheap, we'll pick up, like, two copies and then just, you know, hand one to the other person and... That's kind of what we did there. He just gave me that copy of L.A. Noir because it was so cheap, um, which I appreciate, but probably for my first time play it on PlayStation 4. And I remember back when this game came out on PS3 360, it's still to this day one of the most gorgeous looking facial animations. It's so believable. I can't believe how uh, good it looks. And to this day, that uh, and it's a big part of like the game because you're a detective trying to read people's faces if they're lying, telling the truth. Um, it's still one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in a game, so I wanted to pick that up because it was so um, so cheap. And I think from this point forward, everything is going to be an older, used game. So we'll see what this one is. Ah, it's my Need for Speed Rivals, a launch PSP game. This was... Uh, the only PSP game I bought at launch day, 2005, is when I was definitely young. Couldn't afford to buy a lot of things. And um, PSP was actually, I guess in fairness, PSP was the last platform where it was like a cutoff for me being so young that I had to sell games to get games. Like at a certain point, I started keeping everything I bought, which was uh, 360, PS3, and up essentially, and Wii. Uh, but PSP would be that last platform where I sold games to get games, and I wanted to grab this one again. Really loved uh, Rival. Spent a lot of time with this. Next up, we've got, I'm guessing, a GameCube game. There's definitely two or three of those in here. I think I might be right. <laughs> Metroid! Metroid Prime 2. Yeah, this is a little bit up there, right? This is definitely not a, a cheap uh, old game. But then again, GameCube prices are kind of um, kind of nutty. Although I will say that for the Metroid Prime series, or the trilogy rather, we do have a circulating rumor. and It's kind of 
what seems like more of an open secret that there is a a completed Metroid Metroid Prime trilogy on Switch that's just kind of sitting and waiting to be released at the right moment, um, which you know that may or may not have much movement on the older on the prices of the outgoing games. Uh, oftentimes, that's not always like a huge giveaway that game prices are are going to suddenly drop for some of those classics and uh, well Prime too still you know floating around the 60 70 range and uh, I mean this is just such a really gorgeous looking copy of the game and usually if I'm gonna be spending you know more than 60 70 dollars definitely upwards of a hundred I will take my precious time finding a really good listing for um, before I decide to you know commit to pay commit to paying that much and also we've got more Metroid coming in here I know that much uh, this one Got a nice little pull tab. Love that. Ooh, we've got Morrowind. Yeah, so this is actually uh, your only console option for The Elder Scrolls 3. And you might have saw recently that I bought uh, Oblivion on PlayStation 3. I will always, uh, more often than not, when it comes to multi-platform stuff, obviously I tend to buy it on PlayStation. And for Oblivion, I you know made the case of like I kind of like that period of 2006 to 2009 on PS3, where even a lot of those third-party games are justifiably like not the best versions of those games. And I bought, if you noticed, I bought the very first edition of the game coming out. So there's a game of the year complete edition of Oblivion on PS3 and 360 that you can get uh, with all that extra content. I want what looks like the very first uh, printed run of that game. Uh, but Morrowind, back to this, um, your only option is Xbox. And I'm totally cool with that. Uh, this is a fantastic title and it's um, still, I think it holds up pretty well for the most part. And I didn't have this one, so I figured, yeah, we'll uh, we'll add this to the collection as well. It's super beefy, by the way, with this <laughs> ridiculously thick manual. Uh, yeah, still has all the paperwork. I'm never usually too big of a stickler when it comes to the if the manual is is there or not. But again, if I'm going to be paying a somewhat decent amount or at least market value for some games, I would prefer it to to be there. Oh, a new copy of We Happy Few. I forgot I bought this. Okay, so like I said, there are some games in here where I totally forgot that I had um, purchased uh, some of these. Yeah, We Happy Few is super cheap, like 13 something dollars brand new, and this was on eBay actually, so that's why it wasn't, um, I forgot, because usually if I look at Amazon, I know that's where it's gonna be new in all likelihood. Um, but We Happy Few, I remember when this was uh, first debuted during, I think it was, Microsoft's E3 2014 15 somewhere around there. I really loved the aesthetic of it um, just because it has It looks yeah, it looks like Bioshock and then I believe it's once the news came out that it wasn't like a true Narrative style game everybody kind of fell off and didn't care much for it. I still want to jump in and give it a shot so Pick that one up because it was again really cheap Oh PS1 game Definitely uh, picking up some of these as well. This is Spider. <laughs> Spider, the video game, if you can make that out. It's so small. I don't think the camera's gonna focus that, that easily. Yeah, Spider, the video game. I think when it comes to, I, I oftentimes feel like the, the phrase hidden gem is thrown around a lot when it comes to like some of these games that you think are, not, are like not that well known, but a lot of people know about it. Spider is a game where I think, yeah, oh my God, the disc looks so good. This is one where I think, yeah, nobody actually is that familiar with it. You play as a spider, unsurprisingly. And uh, I don't know, it's just, a, it's quirky. It's definitely like, it's not a bad game, by the way. It's not. Although I don't really, <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> I don't remember playing it that much. And for PS1 games, it's like, you go back to them and you think, oh, this, does, this doesn't hold up nearly as well as I remember it holding up or as much fun as I remember having back then but again spider is one where I, I feel like not a lot of people are aware of that game's existence I think that was like 30 or 40 dollars so the values on that one have held reasonably reasonably well here we've got ah yes I did not know that this game existed in fact or, oh, excuse me. I did know this one existed. I believe there is a, another Yu-Gi-Oh game in here. So let me let me rephrase that. I am well aware of uh, the Duelist of the Roses, but I kind of went down a rabbit hole like a few weeks ago whenever I bought this, 
where um, you know there were certain Yu-Gi-Oh games I knew they I knew they existed, but you know you see in the recommended section like all these other games that are oh, good job by the seller. There's just like there's more there's more Yu-Gi-Oh games than I thought. So I don't know if they're in this batch or I've got another batch that's already piling up, but. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised at how many Yu-Gi-Oh games there actually were, because I thought I kept up with these growing up. A few of these I had, some of these I didn't. I never had Duels of the Roses, so I would like to, I would like to spend some time with this, it's, even though it's not really like, I believe this is also still not like a traditional, it's not like the normal card game, it's some, look at the ultimate tactical card battling game. I don't think this is like a normal, you know, five lane, you know, spell and monster. I like forbidden memories, right? Like that's not a normal. Like you can like fuse cards immediately, and I always thought that was weird. But I do have that one. So now I'm wondering where the other games are. Since I'm speaking too far ahead of time, apparently. This is hey, it's my uh, correct copy of Virtual Fighter Five. I think that was in the last video too. Where right, I noticed it right away when I pulled it out of the box. I was like, why is the box art so faded? And yeah, this one is correct. So this art is not faded. And if I were to um, pull in the other video, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here, where it just like, it was immediately faded. I don't know if it was like sun damage or whatever, but you would see in the manual, like manual was fine, disc was fine. I think even the... No, I think the spine and the back was faded too, so maybe it was maybe it was printed after the fact. I'm not entirely sure, but I've got a, a new copy of that there. Well, a new to me copy. This is uh, some good packaging. I don't remember this being a particularly... I don't think there's like a really expensive game in this batch. I think Prime 2 is the most expensive game I bought here. It is, well, the first Metroid. Wow, this is, this must have came from a high volume seller that's been doing this for a very long time. I cannot believe the condition of this, or the packaging of this game. Like when Metroid Dread was announced, I was like, oh yeah, I definitely gotta go uh, pick up some of the uh, older Metroids. But for some reason, I kind of prioritized the uh, the Prime trilogy over um, you know some of the 2D releases. Because uh, again, two was expensive. Uh, the first one and the third one, not too bad. And uh, the case is really good, actually. This is a very nice, clean copy of the game. There is a slight little sticker on there. Not a sticker, like a slight piece of tape, if you can make that out. That would come off easy. Now, one of these in here. I'm waiting to see when it's gonna. Here it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let me explain. <laughs> BB and Tina at the horse farm. So look, this is a PlayStation 5 game. I'm aware of that. I see what's going on here. Uh, my disc is loose. Lovely. So there, let, let me put it this way, because I, I feel like some people also maybe misconstrued this. I almost always, when it comes to collecting games, will buy stuff knowing that I may not play it today or tomorrow or you know, in a year or two, but I'll eventually play it, right? I always think about a time where maybe I don't have to work nearly as much and you know, I have more free time and I can you know, play whatever I want out of my library. I, I think about that all the time. However, there are certain moments or games that spring up and especially nowadays where game prices are kind of getting so ridiculous where I will look at it and think with, I, I look at it through the lens of like, I feel like this might actually get really expensive very quickly if I don't pick this up even if I say didn't have an interest in playing it. So like, well, Doom 3 VR for PSVR, that's one where I wanted it right away. Uh, Undertale for PS Vita, the physical copy that was available on fangamer.com. Like I, I knew that was gonna go up in value like right away. Um, but there are certain circumstances around PS5 so far where I'm like, there are some really good high quality digital games that are not getting physical releases, not even through limited run. But you have weird situations like this. And I, I was thinking, I was talking to my buddy Terrell. I was like, I, I found this on GameStop.com. It was on the last, it was the very last listing of PS5 games. And it said in-store only. So I'm like, okay, you can't order it online. I've never even heard of this game. Went to eBay. There's four, there's one eBay listing with four quantities. 
I thought, oh my gosh, like, is this like a super low volume game? Is this like random little, you know, weird kids game going to be really uh, valuable one day to like a, you know, PS5, a PS5 collector that's looking to, you know, complete a North American set because we're, we're seeing less and less physical retail games nowadays. So I don't know. It was like kind of a rash decision to to buy this because and I asked Terrell I was like should I buy this and he's like I bet they print it like less than 10,000 copies he's like I would do it um and now this game is like you can buy it for ten dollars on Amazon now it's like now it's everywhere and I guess there's a few uh of these weird games getting getting printed so to be honest buying this was a mistake and I will fully admit that but my intuition isn't always right uh, but I was kind of like for a split second thinking like what the, I feel like there's there's a lot of PS4 games where like they shot up in value right away they might not even be like great games but for some reason they just didn't have a they didn't print many of them and so if you want to get a copy of it you really don't have much of a choice right I paid eighty dollars for Joe's Diner who's really looking for Joe's Diner I don't know but a collector might um, Oh, here's uh, yeah, here's our last Metroid Prime, Corruption. Yeah, this one I had actually too, and uh, I don't know why, but I I guess I got rid of it at some point because I was checking my Wii games and I can't find it. Um, so not to contradict myself by saying I wasn't selling Wii games, but I I don't know what happened to my copy. So this wasn't too expensive. I figured I'd uh, pick this one up as well. I didn't see that in the in the auction. Oh, let's do this actually. I forgot. So this is a uh, really long, by the way. You might be wondering what this actually is. This is from the Video Game History Foundation. And so I I thought this was so cool. Basically what they're doing is uh, they're cataloging pretty much all the video game magazines out there, right? From the 80s up to like the 2000s, mid 2000s. And they've got this program where you can subscribe for like 15, 20 dollars a month and they'll send you one of their duplicates. So they've built up this warehouse of like, or this huge storage of like duplicate magazines after they, you know, scan them and they just archive them. So uh, for 15 something dollars a month, they'll send you one of their extra copies and uh, your payment goes directly to this great nonprofit that's supporting the preservation of games. So I thought that's really appropriate given what we're doing here. Um, not sponsored, by the way. I just thought this was a really cool idea that I was. I was like, oh, I'm going to sign up for that right away because that's just, that's awesome. And I still have a lot of my old video game magazines too. Um, and a lot of strategy guides as well. I like to, I used to keep a lot of strategy guides. Uh, so I thought we'd look at these for the time being. Although I think they're, oh, that's so cool, Nintendo Power. So I think they're running out of these actually. Um, last time I checked, they no longer have the monthly option. Now you can just um, do a one-time purchase of a 80s to 90s magazine or a 1000s. Uh, magazine. So this one, uh, it's got some Wii stuff, obviously. So this one's uh, around 2000, what, 2007, 2006, somewhere around there. Super cool. They give you a little certificate of authenticity. Kelsey Lewin and Frank Cifaldi. Really good cause. So if you're interested, go check out the Video Game History uh, Foundation. They've still got single purchase situations where you can buy these. Actually, we'll take a look at it real quick. This is a, uh, this thing's in wonderful condition. Look at this, this is so cool, man. This is another thing that I think about sometimes too, is like <laughs> setting up a, like a reading nook or something and having a bunch of these magazines kind of close by within reach. Such a cool idea. I'm kind of upset that this is probably going to run out uh, very soon and we won't be able to look at these for that long. I swear, this is the last time you're going to see Final Fantasy X-2 in these videos. I swear. So, the only reason why I bought this, because I, I have it, but I have a Greatest Hits copy. I know. One of my favorite Final Fantasies, I only have a Greatest Hits copy. So really, this was this was really just a purchase of, a, of getting a black label. So now that I have it, I'm, I'm satisfied. We have... Uh, the PS4, um, the PS4 10 and 10 2 collection remaster. We've got Final Fantasy 10 2, the Japanese copy on Vita, and now I've got my black label of 10 2, so <laughs> we probably won't be buying that anymore. Oh, the original Grand Theft Auto, I forgot I bought this too. This was like, 
uh, $20, $30 or something. Um, PS1 is a platform that I, I kind of want to go go nuts and just put in like two, three hundred bucks and just pick up some of the, you know, the well-known classics. But the problem is that two, three hundred dollars, even for PS1, when we're talking about NT, uh, NTSC, doesn't go very far. So GTA is one of the more affordable, well-known PS1 games. And I also find that this is like a very hard game to go back to when, it, when you've got that uh, top-down view. But it's just such a classic. This is a very, a very lovely copy of the game. And Grand Theft Auto is one of my favorite franchises ever in fact one of my um well i always say this but my top three favorite games of all time is grand theft auto san andreas pokemon gold and jack 2 in no particular order but i do think i'm probably a bit more partial to pokemon gold out of all those out of those three but i'm a huge grand theft auto fan and then also i think this was yeah this was pretty cheap too crazy taxi maybe like 10 something dollars 10 15 if i'm remembering correctly but I figured, why not? Um, yeah, just another one where I ran into it on eBay and I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll add to cart. Well, with everything laid out here, I think we got a lot done. We completed a trilogy. I fixed a black label. I fixed that box art. I picked up a hidden gem, uh, made a mistake, completed my Elder Scrolls uh, console collection. So yeah, we got a lot done cool magazine and then yeah Yu-Gi-Oh I guess the other one that I bought is piling up into another box because I didn't want to have I don't want these videos to be obnoxiously long but that will probably be um, next month's upload which at this point we're kind of like falling we're like two months behind on some of the things that I've been picking up lately but if you want to keep up with all that and stick around you can subscribe for the best PlayStation news reviews and updates and things like these you can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.